Trade deadline, folks. Folks, folks, folks. We're going to the trade deadline. Let's do it. We won't know the result against LA for a while. And in terms of deadline day, Adam Bulkfuss is the top dog. Sorelli, Pesci, Wierenski. Certainly some dudes that we could look to target. However, Maxim Chistov. Not good enough, sir. Only 18 games. We got you for two years at 1.7. I'm at least going to see what's out there. Third rounder in Tangay. Second rounder. If there's somebody, if there's a first round pick, we go for it. Definitely. Second round, though, seems like it's about the max. Get a couple veteran players. Hmm. Paulina, what's up? I uh, haven't missed much. This team just being very inconsistent. Who would have thought? I don't know if we keep Chiefs off or not. Menino's got another year at one and a half. I think we can give all three guys an opportunity still. And maybe make our decision by the end of the year. Defensively. Get Hagel and trade him for two firsts, right? Tristan Luno, I've seen all I need to see, buddy. I really like you. I really do. But you have not been able to rise to the occasion this year, improving that you are worth playing on the second pair. Coming home from girls' night. Very nice. I had a date night tonight. so It's nice to get out, isn't it? Granted, you might have had less stresses about being out in public than I did. <laughs> you know, America and all. All right. Let's see. Obviously, we're looking for as high of a draft pick as we can get. We gave up our first, second, and third this year. So the ideal situation would be a draft pick return. I don't want Drew Doughty. I'd love a second round pick, not Jake DeBrusque. Third rounder seems to be the going rate. Medium top six booze and a third from Toronto, though. Let's go look at that deal from Toronto. Booze and a third. This guy is a 73 at 21 years old, 94 offensive awareness. So right winger as well. Let's go for this. We're going to send Tristan Luno to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Terrio is playing FIFA. Jesus, look at him. Uh, we're going to make this deal. Again, uh, Tristan Luno is a prospect IRL that I really, really like, but he is just, he can't. He hasn't proven to be the guy. We're going to move on from him now. And open up space for somebody else to step up here. So we'll pick up booze and a third from Toronto. Also on defense, is there a market for Hoppus Lindholm? A third in Max Domi. A third and a fourth from Carolina. I've held on to Lindholm for five of the seasons out of the eight that he was signed for. Technically six with the one year left. I am going to take that third and fourth. From the New York Islanders. And we are going to finally move on from Hoppus Lindholm. Normally I like holding on to contracts. I held on to that contract for a long time. Okay, apparently no we're not. He's still on the team. Okay. I don't know why he's still here. I don't know why he's still here. Iggy, great movie. If you like the show, you'll like the movie quite a bit. All right, uh, let's take a third and a fourth from Carolina instead. And we officially move on from Hoppus Lindholm. Nelson's been good offensively. That saves him for now. But again, this opens up room. Bixel. <sighs> really good passing. That's about it. Bixel gets to stay for a little bit longer, but barely. Barely. Uh, on the wing, how's Matika doing in the AHL? 15 points in 25 games. That's certainly not bad. That might be enough to keep him around and give him another chance. It's actually only a 49-point pace in the AHL. 
If there's a market for him, we're going to move on. There was not a market, so he'll get another chance. How's Talola doing in the AHL? Five points in five games, not bad. So recently got into hockey because NHL's in the NHL's on EA play. I've really been enjoying franchise and watching the playoffs. Stevie, what's up? What's up? I was going to say, I definitely knew you from Jersey's chat, and there's the, uh, the deal anyway. NHL, it's a solid game for casuals. If you know too much about the sport and how modes should work, then it gets to be a bit frustrating, but enjoy it. Definitely enjoy it. All right, Talola Snoogarood. He can stay for the moment. Obviously, we got a real shortage of uh, good right wingers. On the left, Robertson, 50 points in 63 games. He is proving to be the player that I knew he could be. Pereveloff, crushing it in the AHL. He deserves to stay. Suzdalev, crushing it in the AHL. He deserves to stay. Uh, Matthew Nees, I mean, great AHL. Or Matt with the four months on the primer. Matt, thank you very much. Greatly appreciated. How are you tonight? It's funny, a lot of these dudes are doing very well in the AHL, and at least could potentially earn another call-up. How was Kidney doing in the AHL? He was crushing it. How was Nemesnikov doing in the AHL? Very well. How was Lutz doing? Pretty damn good. How's Jack Finley doing in the AHL now? He's been phenomenal. Man, these guys are so good in the AHL. It's just whether or not they can translate it to the NHL level. That's the question. I don't think we have to move on from anybody else right now. It's just a matter of whether or not we have the assets to go out and get anybody else, and genuinely, if we should go out and get anybody else to maybe try to push this team over the edge towards a playoff spot. Brett Pesci, five years at $11 million, LOL, LOL. Slavin signed for 6 and a half, though. He's still in 89. Oof. Slavin and Pesci have both been pretty damn rough. What would a deal be for Pesci? A first, Maurer, and a second? Absolutely not. School of two seconds? Absolutely not. Thought you were rebuilding. I mean, just because you're rebuilding doesn't mean you don't explore opportunities. Like, School of for Slavin could certainly be an interesting one. But, you'd be dumb to just be like, nope, I'm rebuilding. Is this the franchise where the save fucked up? Uh, I did lose the first season sim, to be honest, though. It's it's so long ago, I, I kind of forgot about it. Wow, Wierenski already re-signed uh, with Columbus. It's the cost for Bokvist. Yeah. Not really worth it to us to go out and get anybody. If we make the playoffs, cool. If we don't, it is what it is. Honestly, Mason Owen. Might kind of be worth the shout, though. Two-thirds and Riley Kidney. I can't risk losing a third rounder, though. We might need it for uh, RFA options. Mikanoff. He's already 23. Ovi's out there, of course. Beckman sat out the entire season. Sorry, right, Beckman. You probably wouldn't have if I didn't forget about you. Max Patch already went back to Montreal. Love to see it. There's really nobody out there that I want this year. A lot of just, you know, below mid-level prospects. How's Oscar Steen doing in Pittsburgh? Yeah, good for you, Oscar. You always were like a 50-point guy at best. Good for you. Maddie Beniers is available. Nemich a second and cheese off a first, cheese off and a fourth. Uh, Skula a third and a fourth. Not worth it because we won't have the negotiating power. How's Stud doing in St. Louis? Never really worked out for Jack, did it? Never really worked out for Jack. How's DeBrusque doing in Tampa? You know, we might have moved on from people at the right time. We might have. Just going to go out on a limb and uh, say that. We might have moved on from people at the appropriate time. 
We appear to be in a better spot than the vast majority of NHL teams right now. We do. McKinnon landed on the Sharks. In my, I in landed McKinnon in my Sharks franchise. He has bounced around like crazy in this in the sim. I think he's been on four different teams. Ryan Winterton is on waivers. Not bad. I'll take him. Why not? We'll give him a shot. We'll give him a shot. So we can give these other guys a little bit more time to try and prove themselves at the NHL level. Otherwise, did I put Swan on the wing intentionally? I guess I did. I don't remember doing that. No, that's right. I made a trade, so somebody somebody moved. Okay. Menino and Chistoff have not been good enough. Neither of them are affected by waivers. Well, little Bo Peep has been our top goalie. Let Chistoff and Menino tear up the AHL for the rest of the year and just try to get their confidence up. Run with the two-time Calder winner. And honestly, maybe just give Froloff an opportunity. He has not been good at the AHL level. Bussy's been okay. I can't believe I'm going to do this. We're going to send down Menino and Chistoff. We're going to run with Bopi. The Bopit. And Brandon Bussy. That is what we are going to do. Defensively, right-hand side is McAvoy, Nelson... Vinny Iorio deserves a chance. You got Nemich. Uh, Tomas Hamara. Hamara. He was doing pretty well in the AHL. He got called up. And then Bixel gets an opportunity to turn it around. We'll see how long that lasts. Forward-wise, we got 10, 11, 12, and 13 with McLaughlin. Booze will be sent down to the Miners. So, really quickly, since it already went best lines, and we're going to have to fix this. Mishenko does keep getting better. Not overly impressed with that fourth line so far, but it is what it is. We'll have Pixel with Iorio, Hamarat with Ty Nelson. Just wanted to make sure that Nick Robertson was on the power play. He is. It's not the top power play unit, but it'll do. Bo Pitt will be the man. We'll go best lines in the AHL. It will be Menino and Chistoff. Looking good. Looking good. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. We are still within striking distance for the playoffs. Unfortunately, I think we're going to waste a great effort from David Posternock this season and probably fall short. We lose two in a row, up being outscored 11-2 to in the process. Uh, it's definitely time. Oh, my. He uh, allowed two goals on four shots in 14 minutes. That, um, that's a problem. Then he loses to the New York Rangers. Uh, we have two wins in our last ten. Those, uh, those playoff hopes are hanging on by a thread here. Pasta hits 50 goals again. Our goaltending has been a problem. Hey, dog, what's going on? Our goaltending has been a problem all season. Bixel's done. I'm willing to make that call already. Liam Bixel is going to be out. Karomaslav will get the call up. Nobody claimed Bixel on waivers either, so. All right, Karomaslav. Let's give you a chance. We'll actually play you with Nelson. Oh, boy. Fuck it. Our coaches don't like it, but I don't care. All right, let's see. Let's take a look here. You're looking to draft a goalie. I mean, we have 
good goalies in terms of potential. We'll just see if they develop. All right, Kizakov. Uh, let's see. Really should be more of a fourth liner. James Swan, not the most impressive, plus minus, point pace, 28 points, not amazing, not horrible, Mr. Schnugerud, on pace for 30, he's not bad on the third line, Lutz has not done a damn thing, Nemesnikov has some points, so does Kidney. So Lutz is the one who is uh, going to lose his spot here. We'll mix up the lines a little bit more from there. So yeah, sorry to Julian Lutz, just wasn't enough. Uh, we picked up Ryan Winterton on waivers. Might as well see what he can do. You notice every dude I've sent down this season hasn't gotten claimed either. I would uh, I would call that interesting. We'll start Winterton on the fourth line. That works for me. Now apparently Karomaslav and Nelson actually isn't that bad, so... Figure that one out. Figure that one out. Let's see what we got here against Nashville. A win. We are right back in playoff contention, however it takes 80 points to make it. We're only on 75. It is a very, very outside chance that we make the postseason. We do not have our first overall pick. And Tomas Hamara is, uh, is out with a separated shoulder. That is unfortunate. So congrats to Petri Alto. You're going to get the chance now. See what you can do at the pro level. Good opportunity to prove yourself, sir. Let's see if you can. We lose to Washington. We are not going to make the playoffs at this rate. Pasta, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. You put up a good fight, but uh, you're not going to be able to carry this team. So we knew we probably wouldn't make it. We're definitely not going to make it. 79 points. We're still five points back with seven games to go. We would have to go on the run of dreams here. Yeah, that's probably it. That's probably it. That Rangers loss. They show you just enough to give you hope. And then they take it away. We're three points out of the playoffs, though. With three games to go, the Caps have four games left. We have to win out. Carolina, we lose 5-1. GG. <laughs> Ottawa, we win in overtime. Can we technically make it? No, we cannot. Dream's over. So no playoffs for the Bruins in this season. That's that's okay. Shout out the system of a down. I'm going to skip it, though. Uh, no playoffs for us is, is what it comes down to. 39, 35, and 8. Honestly, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. You got Florida, Detroit, Ottawa making it. In the Metro, Rangers, Flyers, Devils, Jackets, Caps. In the Central, Jets, Hawks, Coyotes, and Wild. And in the Pacific, Oilers, Kings, Knights, and Kraken. The Rangers win another President's Trophy. The Islanders were the worst team in the league. We finished 19th, which is the well, third highest rating for a team that actually didn't make the postseason. David Posternock. Led this team in points and goals. Great season for Nick Robertson. That's what we needed to see from him. He will be our top line center next season. More than likely. I think we could go with Stenberg and Cooley down the middle. Probably Otto Stenberg. He was a little bit better in terms of the assist, but it does kind of depend on how these guys develop. Nordquist had a good season. Mashenko ended up with a good season as well. I mean, heading in... Shout out to my computer making noises. Heading into next season, like Robertson, Stenberg, Pasta, and then who knows on that left-hand side, Cooley. Well, actually, ooh. Ooh. If we could go Robertson, Cooley, Pasta, Stenberg, Mishenko, 
and Nordqvist, that would be a pretty damn good top six. It would be. McLaughlin got benched because he was trash. Ryan Winterton had one point in 12 games. Well, Ryan, you're not going to make it. Mr. Snuggerud was probably good enough to lock down a fourth line spot. we get Snuggy over there. Uh, James Swan defensively wasn't great, but also point wise, probably good enough to lock down a fourth line spot. Kizakoff, I think as well, you could potentially slot in on the fourth line. Riley Kidney. I mean, we kind of kind of ignore the the plus minuses here. Riley Kidney, twenty four point pace. Kidney probably deserves a chance to see what he can do in a full season. Nemesnikov as well. I don't think we have to get rid of. Mark McLaughlin will be here next year. Defensively, McAvoy was great. Nemich was great. Nelson was pretty damn good. Uh, Arseny Karomoslav was also not too bad. So like Nemich, McAvoy, Karomoslav, Nelson, and then nobody else really played their way onto that defense. And then goaltending-wise, I mean, obviously we got two elite-level goalies in the AHL <laughs> who uh, who couldn't really do well enough to kind of lock down a full spot. So I'm, I'm intrigued. We do have options heading into the next year. Again, scoring was down. I feel like I should put uh, shooting back to high at the same time. It is what it is. But Kaprizov, Barkov, the only two to break 100 points. You also had Barkoff with 65 goals, Matthews with 63, Pasternak was in a three-way tie for third with Zibanejad and Kaprizov. Ellers also broke 50. For those who are wondering, Connor McDavid now has 1,200 points in under 1,000 games. He's only 31. Defensively, Fox, Theodore, Bouchard, Makar, kind of usual suspects for putting up points. Brett Pesci hit 80, for God's sakes. Apparently, uh, douchebags in Vegas. Three defensemen hit 30 goals, huh? Damn. Winningest goaltender, Drew Camesso for Chicago. Winningest, or uh, the most shutouts, I should say, Igor Shesterkin. And uh, Camesso's probably going to win the Vesna. Probably. Rookie Ray, Salinas Erickson for Philadelphia. Wins it in a landslide. Absolute landslide. So that is... Our first season without Patrice Bergeron in the books. No playoffs, which comes to the surprise of nobody based off of how many dudes we got rid of. However, the Providence Bruins won 57 games. And the chance for a championship three-peat is very much alive. I, uh... I don't think we have to change anything with the Lions, to be honest. That team's ungodly. Let's see what happens. They're playing the very, very good Hershey Bears. And they complete the round one sweep. <laughs> this is the most success I might have in this series, is with Providence, let's be honest. It's kind of where we're at. They play the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, who were also... Incredible. They are 2-0 against them. Matthew Knees gets hurt. Make that 3-0. They finally lose. It took until overtime. And the boys are going to the conference final. The chance for the three-peat is alive. They take on the Laval Rockets. Well, Laval... Oh, boy. Laval might be good enough. Laval might be good enough. It's Henderson and Iowa on the other side. The series is tied at two apiece. One went away. And the Providence Bruins are going back to the Calder Cup final again with an opportunity for the three-peat. We still don't know who will be in the Stanley Cup final. Will it be three in a row for Providence? It is a rematch of last year's final, too. That is correct. As Dolov gets hurt, they are one win away. The Providence Bruins. Three in a row for the Providence Bruins. We probably should have watched one of the celebrations, but it's not the trophy raise that I want to see. 
the Providence Bruins have won three consecutive, three consecutive Calder Cups as we get another Oilers Rangers Stanley Cup final and the New York Rangers win the Stanley Cup. The Baby Bees, three in a row. That is outrageous as we'll get a look here at the Rangers. They beat the Caps, Flyers, Panthers, and Oilers in the final. That is insanity. Let's actually get a look at the Rangers. We know Shesterkin and Zabanajad are still there. Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl both playing like IRL McDavid and Draisaitl, if not even underselling it a little bit. But the Rangers, Zabanajad, Kako, I mean, yeah, they kind of have their core in place. They kind of do. Fox, Lundqvist, Schneider. A lot of dudes who are uh, current Rangers that are still there. That team's unreal. That team is unreal. So the Rangers win their second Stanley Cup in four years. They're after their fourth straight President's Trophy. Holy God. Barkoff wins uh, consecutive Art Ross trophies. Joel Farabee wins the Hart. Bouchard wins his second Norris in four years. Kaprizov wins another Bing. Calder did go to Erickson. Con Smythe to Zabanajad. They've had a different Con Smythe winner. Uh, both times they've won the cup. Comesso does win the Vesna. Gordon in Seattle wins the Jack Adams. Matthews wins his second straight Selkie with Bergeron retired. Farabee wins the Ted Lindsay. Barkoff wins another Rocket Richard in the AHL. Three in a row. For the Providence Bruins, after back-to-back -back Kilpatrick trophies, which of course is the equivalent of the President's Trophy, and no, Cody, uh, it won't be Bo Pitt as the uh, as the dude. He was on the Bruins, the main team. So let's see any familiar names here. Shout out to this Morrissey guy, Jesus Christ. Kelly Klang won best goaltender. It was Menino though. So all three seasons, the Providence Bruins have won the Calder Cup. The goaltender was the one to be deemed the most valuable. So with that, let's see if we get a swift kick to the nuts with our pick becoming the number one overall, which again, we do not currently have. Let's see what happens. But a three-peat for the Providence Bruins is phenomenal. We can't be mad about that. And we stay at pick number 14. We traded the 14th overall pick for Logan Cooley. What's there to, what's there to be mad about, you know? What is there to be mad about? The answer is absolutely nothing. Carolina also got the number one overall pick. In terms of retired players, Alex Ovechkin finishes with over a 1,000 goals. Went to Nashville and L.A. in his final two seasons. Scored 47 goals at 42 years old. Brad Marchand in his final year, 38 points in Detroit. He Madonna'd, he Alfredson. John Tavares is also gone. Blake Wheeler, Max Patcher, ready? Vander Kane. And more. Defensively, John Carlson, Drew Doughty, and the best of the bunch, Tory Krug. They all call it a day as well. Which is outrageous, if you ask me really is. Uh, and in goal, Jonathan Quick is gone. Bobrovsky, Holtby, Markstrom, Mrazek, the best of the bunch. <laughs> Nico Costin gone as well. So Jonathan Quick uh, gets a Calder Cup ring despite not being the starter. Drew Doughty becomes a coach. And let's see what we got. I wasn't going to forget goalies, don't worry. So we haven't really checked who has an expiring deal. Logan Cooley's an RFA, Robertson's an RFA. Outside of that, nobody major. Nobody major. But we can look to move on from certain people if need be, so we're looking pretty good. To the draft we go. Nobody in the top five wants to move their pick. So first and foremost, let's get a look at the board. Uh, obviously, there are some elites. There is this potential elite, and Zan Canaro who can play both sides on defense. Hello. 
Uh, we are going to attempt to move up to that sixth overall pick. I don't know how we're going to do it. But uh, if we can snag that defenseman, we absolutely should. And again, apparently my scouts took a goddamn vacation. So Colorado at six. Is there a deal that you would like to make? Fuck. Tampa at five, Nashville at four. Tampa five. Mr. Deke Slayer, how are you, sir? I don't blame you for burning out on this recently. Our first next year, we can't do it. We can't do it. We'd have to reacquire it. And honestly, Ty Nelson was pretty good. I'd have to reacquire that pick. It would be very, very difficult to reacquire that pick. Because we need it for RFAs. Nordqvist and Nemec, Jesus. Cooley Nelson in the third. Bataglia and Nemec. Nick Robertson for the fourth overall pick. Or Skula. Okay. So one of these two should be enough to get it done. Skula. 20 years old, 74 overall, medium elite. Did pretty damn well in his first AHL season. Has snipe basically everything related to being a great goal scorer at the NHL level. Robertson literally just proved that he can be a very solid NHL winger for us. Oof. That's tough, man. That's tough. But I do feel like Skula is worth the risk. When will he hit the high 70s? One year, maybe two? Where this defenseman that we can draft is going to be great right out of the gates. Down the middle at center, we got Stenberg, we got Cooley, we got Mashenko. Do you have a third option? I don't. I think we do it. I think we do it. I like him a lot. It's a risk. I think we do it. We're going to pull the trigger on this. School up for the fourth. There it is. So we move up to the fourth overall pick. And we're going to look to take that defenseman for sure. So Valette, 81 medium elite. Islanders take Antropov. Blues take Byron. We got our guy. Now, technically... Whoa. The dude that our scouts say is the number one guy in this draft is still available. Jonah Bird. He is what we would hope the dude we just traded would be. Bergeron 2.0. We have to. I wanted that defenseman, but holy shit, dude. How did this guy fall? Or how did nobody else... He did fall. He should have been third. We have to. Like, we literally just fleeced Nashville to be able to get this guy. Jonah Bird's the pick. Oh, my God. Dude, look at those attributes, man. Look at how well-rounded this kid is. Look at how well-rounded this kid is. He has quick draw. Oh, my God. That, that's insane. That is insane. I'll go back over here. Uh, Tampa or Colorado, any interest? Any interest, buddies? I'd still really like to get that defenseman. Tampa wants a first, Nelson, or a third, or Bird, LOL. So we could trade our first next year, but I have to get it back. I really don't want to get rid of Ty Nelson. I really don't. Ty Nelson was pretty damn good for us. I guess you could say we'd be getting his replacement. Colorado doesn't want to trade the pick. Really quickly. Really quickly. Wow, we have no picks in this draft, by the way, until way fucking late. This is going to be... An interesting study in wheeling and dealing. Fuck. I think we have to do that Tampa pick. We have to. And we'll just try to get our first rounder back. I have to get this deal done with Tampa. I need that defenseman too. 
100%. Tampa. It's a first. Ty Nelson and a third. Done deal. Now. That first rounder next year is going to be a bitch to try and reacquire. The value is going to be so high. Let's make this pick. I'm going to try to get Ty Nelson back too. Let's make this pick really quickly. No doubt we're taking Jesse Zencanaro. That's a hell of a draft. I'm not done with Tampa. I'm not done. I want those assets back for different assets. Give me Ty Nelson. Ottawa's second this year. Colorado's third. Bo Pitts. Chistoff, a third and a sixth. Salmonson, a fifth and a sixth. Mashenko, Isbister. Salmonson might be the guys that we can keep that second rounder. Salmonson, a fifth and a sixth, isn't that bad. He's 23, he's only a 77. He was really damn good in the AHL. We get him back, though. We get him back, or we get Ty Nelson back for sure. 25 points this year was a minus 11. But 25 points at the NHL level is pretty damn good. Solomonson's completely unproven at the NHL level. I honestly don't really like the attributes. Done deal to get Ty Nelson back. Now we have to wheel and deal a little bit. Get rid of some dudes that aren't going to make it for whatever assets I can get. Literally try to move any piece I possibly can to build up the assets and find a deal that Tampa will do. Sixth round pick for Petrangelo. Done deal. We are going to be flying through trying to move these guys. What about Cruz? Sixth and the seventh from Arizona. Done deal. Again, if the AI want to be stupid, I'm going to let them be stupid at this point. Again, there was no deal for Worrell. Swan wasn't bad, but wasn't amazing. No deals. Finley ended up getting sent down. Fourth rounder. Fourth and a seventh from Columbus and Detroit. Fourth and a sixth from Edmonton. The rights to Adam Beckman. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I know he's an RFA, but holy shit. Uh, Riley Kidney wasn't overly impressive. A fourth from Anaheim. A couple of RFAs that could technically get me a little bit more. A fourth and a seventh from Columbus, Detroit. Fourth and a sixth from Edmonton. I'd like to not take back a ton of RFAs. We're going to send Riley Kidney to Edmonton. He was okay, but he didn't, uh, he, he wasn't undeniable. He wasn't undeniable. What about Julian Lutz? Ryan Winterton. Uh, Max Nemesnikov certainly wasn't undeniable. Goyette didn't even get the chance. Fourth and a fifth. Third round pick. Yeah, okay. We'll be trading Goyette here in a minute. We'll let that pick go through. Colorado, you got fleeced. So again, right now, we're just trying to get as many assets back for a lot of these dudes that really didn't prove to be unmovable. Or didn't really get a chance to, to crack the lineup. Third and a fifth is the going rate that we simply can't pass up. Oscar Steen's a free agent. So a third and a fifth right now. It's not going to get any better than that. It's just a matter of who we want it from. Let's just go Winnipeg. Why not? We'll send him away. We'll send him away as far as he can go. Um, this dude's not that good. No offers. Jorgensen, to be honest. I, uh, I don't know. Ooh, okay, we gotta give him a chance. He's got a good shot. We gotta give him a chance if we can. We'll move him if we have to, but for now, he stays... And again, in terms of centers, like, holy shit, we're just stacked right now. Matthew Knees, can I get anything for you? Seventh rounder. 
Might as well. 213 looks to be the highest one. Let's do it. Uh, Kizikov was okay. Not amazing. Looks like he'll be staying. Samsonov's kind of trash. What about Bergman? Why the AI value low nines, I'll never understand. That needs to be fixed. But I will gladly... I mean, it's a minor abuse of a low-end pick. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, Aiden, what's going on? Perevalov. Fourth rounder seems to be the going rate. Fourth and a seventh from Detroit, Minnesota. Fourth and a seventh from a lot of different teams. We'll take it from Vegas. Again, Beckman we're going to hold on to for the moment. Uh, it's worth negotiating. He's not really worth much. Sizdalev. Fourth and a seventh again seems to be the going rate. We'll send him out to Winnipeg. Or maybe those potentials should be better. Not wrong. Uh, Darby might actually make it. Maybe. What's the deal for him? Nothing. What's the deal for Gregor? Nothing. What about Kopriva? Nothing. Of course, we ended up with a lot of low elites. Uh, we'll let Dallas make their pick at pick number seven. Again, right now our top priority isn't moving up in the draft. It's getting our first round pick next year back from the Tampa Bay Lightning. So that we can make a play in the RFA market. We'll hold on to those guys. Matika probably does deserve another chance. Sontag, third round pick from Arizona. We'll take that third rounder from Arizona. What about Faith? Honestly, doesn't look that bad, but... Uh, let's take that third rounder and Tice Thompson. Limburg still okay. Booze, still okay. We'll hold on to them for the moment as well. Uh, let's see if I can move Thompson for anything. Seventh rounder. Moving to Chicago. Defensively... Is there anybody else? Hamara didn't really do much at the NHL level. Bixel, I could definitely move on from. Nobody wants him. Iorio, we could certainly move on from. Nobody wants him. Okay. Let's go talk to Tampa. Now that we got more assets, I need that first rounder back. Oh, boy. Obviously, that's not going to happen. So we might be out on the RFA market. We might be. We might be. Unless you'd like me to take away... $9 million worth of Anthony Sorelli. <laughs> Fuck. Well, no, I need my first for RFA purposes. That's the only reason we're trying to get it back. Bird and Nemec. They really want Bird. Of course they do. That's the only guy that they're willing to listen on is Bird. And it's not going to happen. Not a hope in hell. Let's see if we can draft somebody that might draw their attention to go for. Bob Koff's two years out. He's not worth trying to trade up for. Well, actually, he might be. Let's pick number 11. Yeah, he'll be gone before then. Very rare occasions to actually be able to trade up Later in this draft. Manny McDonald. Pick number 16. Let's talk to Anaheim really quickly. Honestly, our RFA plans might get pushed to the wayside. Okay, no it won't. At least not for that guy. At least not for that guy. The goal is still simple. Find a way to get Tampa to offer me an opportunity at getting back our pick. Can we do it? There's no way this goalie's not an elite. Minnesota at 23. There's no way that goalie's not a medium elite. 
Mashenko, Sakic, and ooh, I don't really want to give up Mashenko. Nelson in the third. Chistoff in the third. Obviously, Chistoff is already good. I don't really want to give up the third. I don't really care about the bow pit at this point. I don't really care about Sakic. It's just Mashenko. I really don't want to get rid of Mashenko. But we'll get another great goalie in there. And Mashenko, unless we play Stenberg on the wing alongside Robertson, but Maurer's coming up. We're going to go for it. I do want to get Mashenko back for the moment until we know for sure. I do want to see if there's a way to get him back. I told you, uh, <laughs> it became kind of obvious at a certain point this was going to be a draft of wheeling and dealing. And here we are trying to get all the pieces into place. Nelson, a third, and Guerrero. Done deal for the moment. Can I get Ty Nelson back again? Mashenko in a sixth. Fuck. What about that third rounder next year with him? Mashenko in a th They just want Mashenko. Fuck. Ty Nelson might be gone. Sorry, Endo Mills. Two third round picks for my own third. Done deal. My own third's more valuable. Is there any way to get Ty Nelson back? There isn't. So, unfortunately, uh, Ty might be gone. And our first rounder might be gone as well. But we do get that 23rd pick. And the fucking goalie I wanted went the pick before. I, I mean, you knew he was going to be an X-Factor medium elite. You knew it. Ah, L.A. L.A. That is problematic. However, it does mean that we have a first round pick to work with. There's another goalie as well who might be good, but he's not going to be that good. So, let's go talk to Tampa really quickly now that we have this extra first. First round of next year, Tampa. They, they want... They want the guy that I... They want the guy that they should have been able to draft. That's what they want. Well, Minnesota. Can I get Ty Nelson back? Nope. Fuck. Alright. Well, uh, based off of who's available in this draft, I'm now willing to trade this pick. Looks like we might be making this pick because these trades suck. All right, well, looks like we got to find somebody here. Looks like we got to find somebody. Uh, you're not sure, but there's a decent chance. Let's see who we can take with this pick to try to maximize its value. Unfortunately, it, uh, it cost me Ty Nelson. Might not have been worth the risk, but here we are. Let's see, Guru's three years out. We have no way of knowing for sure. There's Kern, who is a first-round goalie. He might be a high starter. Low elite, Baradziuk. Confirmed X-Factor. We have our guy. We have our guy. Imbaradziuk. 100%. And there's Evans, who isn't that bad. Scroder's right around the time that we select again. Well, we got rid of Ty Nelson, but we end up picking up Steven Baradziuk. 66 low elite X-Factors. Holy shit. Holy crap. All right. You know, despite all this ridiculousness, we're actually looking okay out of all of this. We are looking all right. Somehow. Minnesota, please give me Ty Nelson back. They want Mashenko, and I will not allow it. Unless I trade him, and uh, but it's just not... Ugh. Tampa. Give me my first rounder back. Bastards. Bastards. <sighs> I think we have lost Ty Nelson. I really do want him and Zancanero. 
to be my second pair next year at the moment. I'm just worried if I send an offer right now for Ty Nelson, uh, it's going to end up being a situation where uh, they then don't give me a chance to get him back. That is true. They might change their mind in a few days, and that might be what we have to bank on. And three-year ETA is not ideal. Prestberg! Hello! Hello, Robert Prestberg! Around pick number 54. Good God! We have pick 51. <laughs> oh my God! That, uh, that X Factor is unconfirmed. Yeah, we might not need that first round pick next year for RFAs at this rate. Oh my god. Who needs Ty Nelson is right. We just drafted like mini Chara. Oh my god, that's one of the best draft steals we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, we might not need Ty Nelson back. We might not. This is unreal.